what's good YouTube, Sam Crow here aka Scoot back with the World Showdown series and we have our season 6 week number 10 battle here and we're taking on the Rhode Island Wingles coached by Human557 and he's got a pretty scary squad as you can see on screen at the bottom he has the Mega Mawal, Hoopa Unbound, the Lottius, um, Alolan Muck, Rotom, Wash, Chestnut, Del Fox, Magneton, Shuckle which is his uh, avatar by the way, Claydol and Togetic so yeah very scary squad it's kind of top heavy but still nonetheless got some good cores there got some good synergy so on and so forth and we have Aegislash, Hydreigon, Mega Gardevoir, Terrakion, Licky Licky, Crocodile, Rotom Heat, the Trio, Acelgore, Go Go, and the Lapras and in this matchup we've decided to bring our Aegislash, our Hydreigon, Mega Gardevoir, um, Rotom Heat, Licky Licky, and the Duck Trio so uh So in this matchup, I noticed that he, he's got a couple things, a couple different things that the trio really just goes ham on. If I can trap Mega Mawal, I can eliminate it from the match. Um, I, I do have ways to bypass Sucker Punch, as you'll see in a second, when, or when I dive into that deeper. Um, and uh, I can trap the Alolan Muck, the Del Fox, Magneton and uh, the Hoopa Unbound. If it's weakened or something like that, I can trap all of those and I can eliminate them from the match potentially, which is really nice for the rest of my squad. If you look, uh, Hoopa Unbound is a huge threat to me. Um, Alola Muck could be a huge annoyance to me as well. I mean, I do have Crocodile, but I'm not bringing it in this matchup. I just couldn't fit it on the squad. So let's talk about our squad a little bit. Um, in order here we've got the Aegislash which is an Iron Head variant with Shadow Claw and Shadow Sneak we've got uh, King Shield on here as well to avoid or to be able to change back into our defensive stance after you know going into our uh, offensive stance and so on and so forth like that um, Shadow Sneak is there for priority it can pick off a weakened um, a weakened Hoopa it can pick off a weakened Lottie a weakened Delphox, a weakened Claydol, um, potentially a weakened Magneton if it's weakened enough, same thing for, or it actually takes hits pretty well from a Sucker Punchless or Knockoffless Mega Mawal, um, same thing for the, uh, what's it called, the Chestnut, we can take really good hits from it unless it has like Earthquake or Shadow Claw or something like that. Obviously, it's not going to be doing too much, especially in our defense form, or, yeah, our defense form. Shield form, I should say. Yeah, Age of Flesh is really good in this matchup. I'm rocking a Cobra Berry so that I can actually stay in versus uh, Hoopa Unbound if it comes down to it, and just click Iron Head because the Hyperspace Fury will do roughly half if he's like uh, full-on offensive. And... Then after his defense drop, Iron Head will knock him out after I go into my blade form, so it's really nice. And I'm really excited about that. We are speed creeping, uh, you know, some of his slower mods such as Togetic, Claydol, um, Shuckle, uh, a no speed Magneton. And now that has to be like really, really slow. I believe it's like base 90, so it's, it's pretty quick. And then the Alola Muck is also being speed creep. And if he is an adamant, He's adamant with no speed investment with his Mega Mawal, we will outpace it as well, so it's really nice. And uh, yeah, nothing too special about Age Slash here. Uh, we are max HP with a, just a little bit of speed investment. Not really rocking any defenses here. Uh, it's just so naturally bulky that you should be able to do the job the way it is. Next up, we have Hydreigon, which is a, uh, a Groundium Z variant, and this thing's here to blow back the Mega Mawal or the Alolan Muck both don't appreciate Earth Power into Ground EMZ or Ground EMZ into Earth Power or just coming in on a Dark Pulse into Ground EMZ. They don't appreciate that and I am a modest nature so I will be hitting hard. Um, we also have Taunt on this bad boy. We can prevent Muck from recycling if it's a, like a Curse Recycle variant. Can prevent it from cursing as well. Same thing for Rotom Wash. You can't like Pain Split or Will O' Wispus. Um, Chestnut can't set up spikes or anything like that. The Lottie can't roost. Mega Mawal can't uh, set up rocks versus me or anything like that. And the, sh the Shuckle can't do anything weird. It could be Mental Herb though. 
but again, the following tournament can't do anything weird. And Clay Doll can't get Rockstar versus me. And Togetic can't throw wishes off or roost up versus me or anything like that. I, and then I can always U turn out versus those mons that I, I don't match up well against. And then Dark Pulse was my move of choice. Um, in terms of stab to spam versus things like uh, Delphox, Lottie, Claydol, it, it hits the rest of his team decently well. I guess the real roadblock to this bad boy would be the Togetic. And we are rocking enough speed to outpace. Uh, the Hoopa Unbound, unless it is like a Scarf variant itself, and we've got the U-Turn there, and even with a modest nature, U-Turn does a chunk, a big-ass chunk to Hoopa Unbound, and I, I'm really happy about that, because uh, Hoopa's just such a threat, really. Next up, we've got uh, Mega Gardevoir, again, outpacing the Hoopa Unbound, and we've got Hyper Voice, which, you know, just really runs through my opponent's team. And then we've got Hidden Power Ground, which is the Mega Mawall, Delphox, and the Magneton, all of which are the only resistances to Hyper Voice. And then we've got Wish Protect there for longevity. And we've got max HP, so we're pretty fat, but we've got a little bit of special attack investment too, 64 EVs in a modest nature. So yeah, we're looking to do some damage with our first three mods. And then, then our next two mods are kind of our uh, defensive core. We have Rotom Heat, and this is an itemless Rotom Heat. Um, it can take play roughs and iron head, max defense, max HP. It can take iron heads and play roughs from Mega Wall Wall all day long. It can paint split up, catch wishes from Me Mega Gardevoir and Licky Licky, as you'll see in a second. And then we've got Bolt Switch. Basically, spam that versus his squad once the Clay Doll's gone if he decides to even bring Clay Doll. And then we've got Overheat there. It hits the Magneton and hits the Mega Mall Wall for super effective damage. And this, uh, I mentioned paint split already, and our last move is Defog. Didn't want him to, you know, hazard stack with Stealth Rocks or Spikes or anything like that. And like I said, we are itemless. And that That's because um, we can't be two hit KO'd ever by Mega Mall Wall's knockoff. So we can come in on knockoff, we can come in on play rough or iron head or whatever it may be. Sucker Punch does about 35 to 38% or so. So we're a pretty good check here to the Mega Mall Wall. Kind of interesting to see uh, Rotom Heat try to check it. So. That, that'll be fun to see. Next up, we have Licky Licky, which, uh, which with Rotom Heat being more defensive, we've got Licky Licky here, and we've got a more Spadef variant. Can take on the Delphox pretty comfortably. We have Earthquake and Knockoff to get rid of items uh, with Knockoff there, and then Earthquake hits things like Magneton and Delphox and Mega Mall Wall for super effective damage. Hits the Alola Muck as well, and then Knockoff gets rid of items, like I mentioned. It's really nice versus things like Vladi. Uh, potentially muck if it's a salt vest or if it's just a berry and same thing for like a potential choice scarf Delphox or a choice scarf Hoopa and the Eviolite on the Togetic so yeah throwing knockoffs off will be really nice and we've got the Oblivious ability so that we can't be taunted by any of his mods which is really really nice in this matchup and uh, we've got just a little bit of speed investment again speed creep in his slower mods nothing too special here though and we are rocking an item on this bad boy leftovers helps us avoid being too hit KO'd by like modest max special attack delphox's fire blast and so on and so forth and last but not least we have our trio here we are rocking enough speed to outpace delphox which allows us to outpace everything else on his squad outside of the Lottie. and uh, we're rocking an adamant nature uh, reason being is it does the most damage, and we didn't really need Jolly, except to outpace the Lottie, but we don't have anything on this set to hit the Lottie with anyway, so it doesn't really even matter. And uh, our moves for this matchup will be Substitute, Stealth Rock, Earthquake, and Toxic, and our item is going to be the Soft Sand, so boosting our Earthquake damage output. Toxic is going to be able to hit things like Chestnut, Rotom, Togetic, Lottie, so on and so forth, and this is our designated Stealth Rocker, like I mentioned. And Substitute is there so that I can sub up on a Mawal's Sucker Punch, avoid the Sucker Punch, avoid being hit by priority, and then click an Earthquake on the following turn. And uh, yeah, I guess that's just about it. That's going to be the prep for uh, week week number 10. I'm going to go ahead and hop into the replay and see how the battle goes. Alright, so here we are with the replay. And my opponent does bring the Alola Muck, the Mega Mawal, and the Hoopa. Those were all three basically givens. Um, Rotom Wash was pretty likely. Chestnut was a pretty good bring too. It checks the trio. It checks uh, Crocodile as well. So I can understand that as well. And then the Togekick 
Togetic as well, uh, being a good check to have Dragon. So yeah, his team makes sense, pretty much, kind of what I expected. And uh, yeah, so Hoopa could be Scarf, it could be Banded, Specs, Life Orb, could be like some kind of sub salic variant and things like that. Um, Mega Mawal is a huge threat. It's it's also, if you look at his squad, it's his only Stealth Rocker uh, in this matchup. So if he, if he doesn't have Stealth Rocks on the Mega Mawal, he doesn't have Stealth Rocks at all. And that leads me to believe if he doesn't have Rocks, he might be a Spikes variant on Chestnut. But if he does have Rocks, then he might not be chest or a Spikes variant on Chestnut. He could potentially be like a Belly Drum Salic Berry variant or something like that. Below the Muck, it could be Curse, Recycle, it could be Assault Vest few different things it could be as well. Mega Gardevoir could be a huge threat, so being a salt vest on something like uh, Alola Muck and then having quite a bit of bulk on the rest of the squad could be something. It could be something, definitely. But yeah, looking at it, you know, Mega Maul being his only stealth rocker and Chestnut being his only other potential hazard setter, um, I felt like Rotom Heat was a pretty good lead for me. And I guess there was a chance he could have led with uh, Rotom Wash. Um, and I guess that could have been bad for me, but I felt like Rotom Heat was more than likely my best lead. I guess I could have led with something like Hydreigon as well. A uh, few different options I have, um, but so the the most likely scenario was me leading off with my Rotom Heat, as it would be the best lead off versus him. It can bolt switch versus the majority of his squad. Well, his entire squad is actually. Uh, Volt switchable, <laughs> and uh, if he led off with something like Mega Mawal or Chestnut, then I could just click overheat and claim a kill. So I know he's not going to allow that to happen, and he's probably going to lead off with his Rotom Watch. And that being said, I'm going to take the opportunity to lead off with my Gardevoir here and see what he wants to do. And if he does lead off with something else, I could always switch, but he does lead off with his Rotom, his Rotom Watch here. And I debated this play for a second. Um, I understand that he, I, I could use this thing as setup fodder. Like if I was a Calm Mind variant, or if I was a substitute variant or something like that, then this Rotom Wash is gonna have a hard time. Um, but at the same time, if I was a sub variant and he just Volt switched out into Scarf Hoopa and then clicked Hyperspace Fury, you know, he has a, he has a pretty good time with that. You know, being able to bypass sub with Hyperspace Fury is really, really nice uh, tech for the Hoopa. So what I'm going to do here is just click Hyper Voice, and it does 66% to Rotom Wash as it clicks Thunder Wave and paralyzes me. So the pair is a little bit unfortunate, as now I'm slower than the majority of his squad, and uh, there's always a potential for being fully paralyzed. So he goes into his muck here, he basically, you know, comes in for free. And I'm going to hard switch out to my Hydreigon, and he's going to predict that. And he goes for the Ice Punch, and he gets the Poison Touch Poison, which is a lot better than a Freeze, but it's still a little bit unfortunate, especially since I bypassed on Roost to, uh, for, you know, get the, uh, the, uh, or do I have Roost? No, 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 I have Taunt. Yeah, I, I bypassed on Roost for Taunt. So, yeah, here, um, I could click Earth Power. It would probably bounce off. I could click U-turn, uh, and that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm just going to U-turn out here and see what he wants to go into. More than likely, his Togetic, which gives me my Aegis Slash. Uh, it's not a not not a bad uh, scenario whatsoever, in my opinion here. And I'm going to double out into my Mega Gardevoir, but he actually pulls a switch out into his uh, into his Mega Mawal. So I figured he would go into Chestnut or but potentially Chestnut on the Shadow Ball or go into Rotom like on a Flash Cannon or something like that. So I doubled out into my Gardevoir here, but that's actually going to set me back and uh, that's okay though. I do have a dedicated answer to this and I'm going to go hard into my Rotom Heat as he goes for Iron Head and as you can see it does less than 20% and I can just Volt Switch out here as he brings in his Rotom Wash and now I bring in my Gardevoir here and basically can throw off a Wish or a Hyper Voice here. I am going to decide to Wish but he's going to bring his Togetic in on my Wish here, and I get fully paralyzed, which is not too big of an issue because I get the Wish back. It's just a little bit annoying there, um, as I would have been able to get some nice damage off on the Togetic. I get fully paralyzed again as the Muck comes in, and I would have gotten another 28% off versus that, 25-28% off versus that, and put it near half, which would have been really, really good. 
but yeah, I'm forced back out into my hydrate gun here as he clicks knockoff. I don't have an item though, so that was a fine play by, you know, for both of us there. And I'm going to go for the ground EMC here because he revealed Togetic to be his switch in already. <laughs> but, uh, and, and I figured he would, you know, either catch me on a double there, you know, me double and he would predict my double and stay in with his muck or something like that. And I go for the ground EMZ, the tectonic rage there, and he's going to dodge that. Yeah, he's going to dodge that with his Togetic there. Really nice. Uh, not, not dodge it, he's just immune to it. So, yeah, I'm forced out into my my Hydreigon here, and then I'm going to double out into my Doe Trio, and I catch the Alolan Muck and eliminate it. Trapped, seek and destroy, baby. <laughs> seek and destroy. So I trapped it on a double switch, and then eliminated it with the soft sand boosted Adamant Earthquake. So that was really nice. But he brings in his Hoopa, and this was concerning for me, because if I'm Choice Scarf, why would you bring this thing in? You either have Bulk, or you assume that I'm not Choice Scarf, and that... Uh, and that you are probably Choice Scarf. So, thinking that he may be Choice Scarf, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch out and go into my Licky Licky. And I don't take this super well. Um, I take it to the point to where I can protect here and be back in a position to take the next one. But it was close, you know what I'm saying? It was super, super close. I'm going to hard switch out into my Mega Gardevoir here on his chestnut as he's likely going to go for the fighting type attack and he does he goes for the drain punch but it bounces off it does what 11 or 12 percent or something does 12 percent and then uh he could he could have poison jab but i am i'm a fat gardevoir and if he's not invested it should not knock me out i'm going to click hyper voice here as i get fully paralyzed on his rotom sack so what would have happened there with would, would have been the Rotom Wash taken 66% there, which was an overkill. Uh, however, I'm going to get my Wish back here, and I'm going to come through, not get paralyzed on that turn, and knock out the Rotom. So here, he brings in his Hoopa. I know he's going to go for, uh, I thought he was going to go for the Hyperspace Fury, honestly, but he goes for the Gunk Shot. And I think this was a misplay, because it gives me Aegislash. And Hyperspace Fury was likely going to be a knockout from that range and if he's not uh if he's not scarfed here he will go for the hyperspace fury but i do have the cobra berry so i'm fine with that what i'm going to do is you know bring my Aegislash in anyway and i'm going to go for the iron head and as you can see it does almost half to this chestnut so i reveal some some interesting information there as it seems to be more offensive and he goes for the shadow claw and with that and my king shield i get the attack drop and now i know i can take the next shadow claw so i just go for the iron head as he actually switches into his Mega Mawal and takes almost half, but he pain splits up as I bring in my Rotom, which was a fine play by him. And now I can uh, Bolt Switch out, I can Overheat, whatever. Uh, I am going to Bolt Switch predicting his switch. I don't see him staying in with Mega Mawal. And I'm going to bring in my Aegislash here and just click Iron Head once again. Pick up the Knockout here as, uh, as he stays in with his Togetic. So now he brings in his Chestnut. And what I'm going to do here is go right for my King Shield once again as he goes for the Belly Drum. So that was really nice. Nice to see. Uh, Salic Berry pops too, but I do have the Priority Shadow Sneak. And I am going to be able to knock out the Chestnut there. And now he brings in his Hoopa Unbound. So if you didn't know, uh, Hyperspace Fury bypasses Substitute and does damage to you. It can knock you out through Sub. It can knock you out through Protect and it can knock you out through king shield potentially detect as well but i'm not real sure but yeah i couldn't king shield there and rely on a attack drop so i had to switch out here and sack something off it's going to be my guard of warrior serves no purpose to this match it gets one shotted by hoopa gets one shotted by mega mawa as well i'm gonna bring my age slash in here reveal that i'm cobra berry and knock him out with the iron head easily gonna knock him out after the defense drop and then what i can do here is go into my rotom heat as he goes into his mega mawa this is his last mon. He goes for the play rough. Not able to uh, knock me out here. I'm going to pain split on this turn because I was in range of sucker punch. But now I'm not. And what I can do is volt switch out on his sucker. Put him easily in range of earthquake here. And I'm going to substitute up on his sucker punch so that I can bypass any damage there. And then on the following turn I can click earthquake as he breaks my sub. And we're going to pick up a big 4-0 victory to put us in a position to where we can make playoffs if we win our last game. So, like I mentioned in the previous video for the World Showdown Series, 
every game is must win. This was a must win game and we're able to pick up the W. We're moving into week number 11 with a five and five record now and we have an opportunity to go six and five and make playoffs. Um, if we go five and six, I think there's still a small chance that we make playoffs, but it, it, it depends on a lot of other people losing and stuff like that. If we go six and five, we have a whole lot of a better chance, almost guaranteed, to at least make it into the playoffs, even if we're the sixth seed. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can ride this 4-0 win, momentum, all that stuff into next week as well and win that last battle. Good game to Human 5-7. Five, five, Boysenberry, uh, coach of the Rhode Island Wingles. Good luck in your last game, my man. And yeah, that's going to be it. So let me know what you guys thought about the prep and the plays on both sides of the field. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All the good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.